Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is November 20th. It's a holiday week, so a lot of folks have the week off or will be off sporadically throughout the week. So Max Massey is with me today and again tomorrow, right? Then tomorrow. Fantastic. It's good to hey, see you. you as well. Good morning. Good morning. First off, always an honor to get called up for the weekdays. It's yeah. great. Uh, you were coming off an eventful weekend. Talk about the holidays. Your family already in town. Yeah, my sister was in town. We saw all the sights. I even walked her up to show her uh, some of the changes already in Alamo Plaza yesterday. And then the skating rink was up and running over there at the park. Mm hmm. Yep. So it was funny because I think it opened Friday. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was like 80 degrees and yeah. people hit the skating rink. So I know Mike Osterhage, you grew up in Michigan. Yep. Ice skater, yep. hockey player. Did you hit the rink yet? No. Not yet, but this is going to be a great week for it. Not necessarily today, because it's going to be a lot like what it was on Friday, where we are going to be very warm. As a matter of fact, there's mist and, and fog out there right now, so that is uh, not really all that great. Take a look at uh, some of the uh, visibilities, though, as of right now around the area. We have got two miles at the airport, six Port SA, five Castroville, and five out there, five miles visibility at Kerrville. And again, we're going to have to watch this throughout the rest of the morning because it will get thicker at times. A lot of thick fog over here along the Rio Grande. Half mile visibility at Eagle Pass. Carrizo Springs has some fog as well. And there's mist on top of that. So we do have some damp roads. So if you do indeed have to uh, head on out this morning in the morning commute, make sure you take it easy. Temperatures are way, way above normal, but this is going to be changing. As a matter of fact, take a look at these numbers because these are even warmer than what some of our high temperatures are going to be throughout the rest of the week. Here's a quick look at what will be happening throughout the rest of of the morning, a couple little sprinkly showers around here, plenty of clouds, and then by late morning, everything starts to clear on out of here, and we're gonna have plenty of sunshine by noon, and then maybe a few more high clouds later on this afternoon. But that's as the front moves through, and that's going to bring in, like I said, beautiful fall weather for this week. So fog mist, the front late this morning, then sunny and Windy today, but really windy tomorrow. We're looking at wind gusts about 35 miles per hour. Sunshine, chilly uh, the next few days, 40s, and then up to the low 60s for high temperatures. Thursday, cloudy, cool, maybe a shower. Jury is still out on that. I'll explain in just a couple of minutes. And then coming up for the weekend, cloudy, cool, a sprinkle here or there. Good shopping weather, though, I think. And for Friday, for uh, the Christmas tree lighting, Christmas parade, everything looks fantastic. And another front comes through to keep us on the cold side on Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, the man behind the wheel this morning. Good morning, All right, sir. yeah, see, I see Max over there hyping me up already. Good Monday morning to everyone out there. Of course, a holiday week, so expecting a little bit less activity on the roads this morning. But we will take you outside, Trans Guide, 151 Military Drive. Traffic moving pretty smooth in this area here. Here. Really no major incidents to let you know about right now. Uh, there's a little bit of a traffic delay there at uh, 1604 and uh, Bandera. I'll go ahead and check that out here in just a little bit. But we do have some ongoing construction that was causing a little bit of an issue for our drivers overnight. One was here in the westbound lanes of 1604 at Lock and Terra Parkway. That appears to have cleared out. No major issues there. And then we also have ongoing construction there uh, much further north there, southbound lanes at 35 at Walnut Avenue, a little bit south of uh, downtown New Braunfels. So something that uh, maybe our drivers that are coming into San Antonio from New Braunfels may just kind of be aware about. Things might be kind of clearing up there. One more quick look at Transgon. Guy, traffic again moving pretty smooth across our area. Max and Mark back. Thanks, RJ. New today, a suspected serial killer making his first court appearance in Travis County. Raul Meza arrested back in May, allegedly killing his roommate Jesse Fraga. Now, Meza, before being arrested, called police implicating himself not only in Fraga's death, but also the murder of a 65-year-old woman named Gloria Lofton back in 2019. Awesome police say they're still looking into eight to 10 different cold cases that Mesa could be connected to, including a possible case right here in San Antonio. Mesa had previously been in jail for murder back in 1982. He was given a plea deal for the murder of eight-year-old Kendra Page. He only served 11 years of that sentence. Mesa, who's charged with capital murder, no word yet if the death penalty could be applied to his case. Happening today, a woman found guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon will find out her sentence. Amanda Montoya was previously charged with the murder of her boyfriend, Cesar Gallegos, back in 2016. This was a retrial after Montoya's case ended in a mistrial because a jury couldn't decide on a verdict. 
On Friday, about a, a jury spent about 11 hours deliberating and came back with not guilty on murder, but guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. There's still a first degree felony and the punishment is five to 99 years in prison. The punishment phase will begin this morning in the 227th District Court. Well, now to encouraging news from the Mideast. A deal to free more hostages held by Hamas appears to be getting closer this morning. And this comes after a slew of more videos being released. These videos showing a lot, including Hamas taking some of the hostages and videos from inside the hospital that seem to have served as a form of headquarters during the attack. ABC's Liz Landers reports there's growing hope that a pause in the fighting could come soon. This morning, negotiators are reportedly closer to an agreement with Hamas to release 50 hostages in exchange for Israel allowing more aid into Gaza. The number of hostages to be released and the length of the ceasefire that would be imposed are still being negotiated. Some of the issues that were uh, at odds uh, have now uh, been closed out, but we are not finished. Israel's military says this video shows hostages being rushed into Gaza's largest hospital on October 7th when Hamas militants attacked Israeli border towns, triggering the war. A group of men dragged an individual into Al-Shifa Hospital to the surprise of medical staff, while a second clip shows an injured man on a stretcher. Hamas previously said it took some hostages to hospitals for treatment, but Israel says the group used a network of tunnels under Al-Shifa for military purposes and to hide hostages. Israel's military also releasing this video from a drone, entering what it claims is a Hamas tunnel 30 feet beneath the medical complex. The World Health Organization has described the hospital as a, quote, death zone. Nine premature babies reportedly died after being removed from incubators when electricity ran out. But yesterday, 31 babies were evacuated to a hospital in southern Gaza. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. Other stories we're following this morning. Former President Donald Trump was at the U.S.-Mexico border yesterday with Governor Greg Abbott to serve Thanksgiving meals to Border Patrol agents and to receive a key endorsement. Both took the stage in Edinburgh to talk about their policies concerning immigration. Trump hasn't released the fine details of his potential policies if he gets reelected, but is hinted at coming down hard when it comes to securing the border if he makes it back to the White House next fall. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin in Kyiv, Ukraine. Now, the Department of Defense says Lloyd's surprise visit was purposeful. It was to engage in high-level talks with Ukrainian leadership. Today, he's set to meet with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Just about 508, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA. All right, it has been a wild 72 hours for Microsoft. But before we get into the drama, we are talking about a new product launch. They're launching a Windows app still to come, but we're now learning. Taylor Swift returns to the stage in Rio de Janeiro after the break, how she paid tribute to a fan who died in the heat down there. And back here at home, 67 degrees to start your Monday morning. Like we've been saying, it is a vacation week. A lot of people wondering what travel is going to look like this week and if they can throw the football around Thanksgiving Day. We're going to check in with Mike and RJ in just a bit. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the tragic death of a 23-year-old Taylor Swift fan amid extreme heat. I'm sorry, it's just very hot, so it's because they need water when it's this hot. They really need it. Music superstar Taylor Swift returning to the stage in Rio de Janeiro just days after Ana Clara Benavidez Machado died from a heart attack while attending Swift's Eras Tour shows amid excessive heat concerns. The heat index reached a high of 138 degrees Fahrenheit Friday in Rio, a level where experts say heat cramps, exhaustion and strokes are possible with prolonged exposure or physical activity. Nobody wants another another person to get hurt, let alone die in a situation like this. And we'll have much more on what changes the Eras Tour is making going forward coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lionel Moise, ABC News. Okay, there you go. We're going to make conversation. I had to take my earpiece out. I'm not used to standing on this side of right. the desk. And we both wear our earpieces on this side. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's to our right, the chances of actually hearing them is... 50-50? I just smile and nod. Smile and nod. I boys. smile and nod. Well, this is going to be a great morning. So yeah. I talk, you can hear me over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So keep talking, Mike. Max, Max. Oh, you can hear me in your earpiece, <laughs> though. Uh, 512, 67 degrees. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, you know what? We can hear RJ Marquez through the morning. He is with us. We're taking a live look out at the roads. Oh, he wants nothing to do with this. He, he's like, please keep me out of this. We're going to check in with him in just a bit. a better postal service for more on-time deliveries and easier, affordable ways to ship so you can deliver even more holiday joy. The United States Postal Service, delivering for America. Honey. Honey. NyQuil Severe Honey, powerful cold and flu relief with a dreamy honey taste. NyQuil Honey, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever, honeylicious, best sleep with a cold medicine. Have fun, sis. Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft has launched a new app giving access to Windows from iPhones, iPads, Macs, and PCs. The app works by allowing users to run a remote Windows PC and stream the output to their Apple devices. For now, the new Windows app is only available for business accounts. A new messaging app has been pulled from the Google Play Store just days after its release. Google says the launch of Nothing Chats is being delayed due to privacy concerns. Reports say contrary to its claims, the app does not have have end-to-end -end encryption. Finally, attention gamers who cannot get enough of The Last of Us. The game's creators say The Last of Us Part Two Remastered is coming to Sony's PlayStation 5 in January. The game includes lost levels and new combat encounters against a range of enemies. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, back here at home, kids living at Roy Moss Youth Alternatives, they were treated to a special Thanksgiving feast from Bruce Chris Steakhouse. Many of the kids able to enjoy turkey, potatoes, and desserts for the first time. Now, this is the 18th year of the event. Lana Duke, the owner of Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, saying it holds a special place in her heart. Oh, I do it because I was a foster child and I had a lot of uh, rough experiences, and now I'm just so lucky and gifted, and it's a way of giving back. All right, our own Ursula Perry taking part in the event. You see it right there on stage. All right, guys, No Shave November continues. We're approaching the home stretch here. Let's take a look at the latest leaderboard. And I have a feeling, yep, I knew it. Wow. I knew it. Somebody would leapfrog Mike Osterhage <laughs> with some vigorous campaigning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did do a lot Saturday, didn't you? Yeah. I'm telling you, well, first off, this is a great team effort. Us as a team are yes. number one in the country right now. All Fantastic. Right. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're up against some uh, interesting competition. Most of them are law enforcement from around the right. country. Right, the Alaska yeah. State, State Troopers. Troopers. Yes. I Whoa. saw that. Isn't okay. that kind of cool? <laughs> that I think is. the important part is that people are actually stepping up, helping yep. out. Even if it's just $5, it means so yeah. much. And everyone's beard looks fantastic. Everybody looks really yeah. good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got the uh, Sarah Spivey push over the weekend. I know mm, you did, too. I know. Yeah. Sarah's Very nice. Yeah, the, the Sarah's <laughs> going for him over the weekend. I mean, so. It's a testament to our weekend family. <laughs> All I have to say is gray hairs. Are you going to let these boys oh my goodness. Looks conquer or gray hairs? Come I've on. had people on shoots. Team gray hair. <laughs> I've had people on shoots come up to me and say their team Silver Fox. I assume right. that's you. Thank you. Uh, actually, that one's me. I'm always team Silver Fox. <laughs> Always Team Silver Fox. All right, RJ, <laughs> what's up? Better maps here, yes. Um, yeah, traffic kind of quiet right now, guys, so not much going on across the city of San Antonio. Biggest thing uh, that we're following is we do have some fire department activity here on the uh, near southwest side, but it uh, doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic delays or issues at the moment. We do have a stalled vehicle being reported now at the uh, further along the southwest side there on the uh, Loop 410 northbound lanes at Old Pearsall Road. So something that our drivers there are going to have to keep in mind if you're heading around the Lackland area. And one more uh, bit of construction going on here all the way up north, the southbound lanes of 35 at Walnut Avenue. So something we're going to have to keep in mind as we make our way out. Loop 410 Blanca Road, things looking good there. 281 at Nakoma, traffic moving pretty smooth in that area as well. Mike, how are things looking? right now. Well, one thing you have to watch out for is a little bit of mist fog around the area this morning. So that's going to be for those that do have to uh, head into work. And what a great picture yesterday. Sunrise there in Pleasanton and wow, 
little bit of sun peaked on through. Maybe that was a couple of days ago, but yeah, because yesterday at my house, it was nothing but just gray skies and misty, drizzly all day long. And right now, as you can see, not a bad picture out there at the airport. It does, though, look like the road is damp. You can see a little sheen off the road from those headlights. Two miles visibility officially out at the airport. Five Casterville. Head out 10. You're going to run into some of that fog. And then further out to the west. Uh, this morning, there's the uh, the brunt of the fog out there along the, the Rio Grande. But again, it is kind of scattered about it will get thicker at times as the morning rolls on and then we're going to be clearing out nicely so we stay very steady throughout the next couple of hours a little bit of that mist as well and then by late morning that's when the front starts to work its way on through here and we are going to see things clear on out early afternoon late morning and maybe a couple of extra clouds later on but we will hit 80 and then the cooler air is going to move on in here and the wind is going to be shifting around out of the northwest and it's going to be breezy today, but it's really going to be windy tomorrow. So we're going to have some wind gusts 20 close to 25 miles per hour. Then by tonight, the wind really starts to pick up here and we get those gusts 30, 35 miles per hour and even stronger than that in portions of the hill country. So it's going to be extremely blustery, especially the first portion of the day tomorrow. Then the wind should start to subside just a little bit. All right, here's what's going on and here's a look ahead to what's going on on Thursday. We've got the front, which is moving on through here. That's going to pull down a nice chunk of cooler air. So we are going to have great weather. Tomorrow, Wednesday, chilly mornings, nice afternoons, as well as on Thursday, this little thing down here, that low, that's what is uh, kind of the fly in the ointment, maybe on Thursday. So it depends on the, the computer models. They're still not lined up with this, but this thing's going to try and work its way across the area. Some models keep everything down to the south. Others have a couple of sprinkles in here, but with this thing moving across here, you can't completely rule out a stray shower on Thursday. Then in behind that, we will have plenty of clouds. This is a little bit more sunshine on Friday and Another low is going to try and develop out there to the west of us, but as far as the weekend is concerned, we are going to be seeing a sprinkler two around here and another front that comes through then during the day on Sunday to reinforce some of these cooler temperatures. So today, 80, the front comes through. We still heat up out of, uh, in behind it until the cooler air comes on in here. Then temperatures are going to be dropping down. Low 60s the next uh, few days. Temperatures in the 40s starting off. And then on Thursday, plenty of clouds around here. Again, a shower is going to be possible. Clear out somewhat on Friday. And the weekend looks great. And I think it's going to be one of those upside down days again on Sunday or just steady temperatures all day on Sunday with another front that moves on through here. So after today, fall returns. Black Friday shopping day looking yeah. pretty good. And for the, the parade and the Christmas tree lighting and everything that like that stuff. on Friday. Thank you, Mike. 522, 67 degrees. All right, like we've been saying, Thanksgiving almost here. Movie award season is upon us after the break. The latest honorees, plus some good news for Dune fans. I am Bella Baxter, and there is a world to enjoy, circumnavigate. It is the goal of all to progress, grow. A woman plotting her course to freedom. Emma Stone is headed to the desert. The Palm Springs International Film Festival is honoring the star of Poor Things with this year's Desert Palm Achievement Award actress. Desert Palm Achievement Award actor is going to Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. The Palm Springs International Film Awards are set to be handed out at the festival January 4th. Kerry Washington is also anticipating an honor. The actress, producer, and activist is set to receive this year's Equity and Entertainment Award at the Hollywood Reporter's Women in Entertainment Gala December 7th in Los Angeles. The honor recognizes people who amplify underrepresented voices in the entertainment industry. Do you believe in Paul? There are signs. The release date two-step continues. Dune Part 2, already bumped back from November to March 15th, has now moved up two weeks to March 1st. Warner Brothers made the move after Universal pushed The Fall Guy, which was scheduled to debut March 1st, back to May 3rd. Updating my calendar in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Monday, just about 5.30 this morning. It is November 20th. Look at this. The boys are back in town. We are. Indeed. Good to have everybody here yeah. this morning. And I think we're starting with weather. Mm. Yes, we are. Yes. Indeed. I was going to show off the beard. Well, and it indeed. seems like it's kind of applicable. Temps are coming down. And and this beard is the is in the lead right now. So congratulations, okay. sir. Uh, thank you. I want to yeah. you know thank everyone who has donated. More than 100 donations. So we still have time. 
Yeah, we still have time. No the end shame. Of November. November continues. Yeah. So mm -hmm. go to our social and you'll find links to our individual pages. <laughs> this our is page. a team effort. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and but yeah, and of course. Our team is number one in the country right we're, now. We're yeah. just ahead of the Thanks. Alaska State Troopers. Thanks to all of you folks. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we better not drive up to Alaska. We'll get pulled over by them if we uh, win first place. So anyway, uh, yeah, thank you for all your donations, folks. This is a lot of fun to do. All right, outside, we do have some fog out there right now, as well as some mist. Now, this picture out by the airport, despite the fact that low visibility is being reported out there, as you can see the road is a little bit kind of dampish looking. Uh, we've got temperatures right now that are almost 20 degrees above normal. Should be in the upper 40s right now. We're at 67. Dew point 66. So those two numbers running neck and neck, then you don't have any wind to deal with and you start to see some fog around the area, although we do have cloudy skies, so that helps to kind of prevent a lot of really widespread thick fog. Despite that, though, two miles, like I said, out at the airport, four Bernie stage up around Kerrville, some fog heading out west on 90, and especially out there along the Rio Grande, Eagle Pass is at just a half mile visibility, a lot of fog around Carrizo Springs, as well as Catula. So this we keep monitoring all morning long. It's gonna get thicker before it starts to thin out by late this morning. Very consistent temperatures again, thanks to cloud cover, thanks to all the uh, humidity out there and throughout the rest of the day, 76 at noon. Now we are going to be down to 75 at five o'clock, but right in the middle right here is when we hit 80 and that's going to be just after the front arrives because we'll still warm up before some of this cooler air tries to move on in here and winds going to shift around out of the northwest it's going to be kind of breezy today gusty winds and then really gusty tonight and overnight so if you have any of those uh, inflatable christmas decorations or thanksgiving decorations yeah may want to make sure they're deflated tonight so they don't get blown away Great fall weather in store for the next few days. What about Thanksgiving and the long holiday weekend? Those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike, things looking pretty good on the roads right now. Of course, uh, no school for our major school district, so things going to be pretty smooth sailing, hopefully, uh, for most part of our morning. I-35 New Braunfels traffic moving along pretty smooth there. Love this shot there of the Alamo Dome there at 37 at Houston. And again, across the city, things looking pretty good. I'll check this out. Just popped up in our maps there up in uh, Leon Valley. We do have a stalled vehicle being reported on the southwest side. This going on here at the uh, 410 northbound lanes at Old Pearsall Road, but doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic delays or issues right now. So a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads right now. Quick check of gas prices. 273 right now. Bear County. Things looking good there. Uh, six more cents across the state of Texas. You're going to be heading out anywhere. And this is pretty good prices compared to the rest of the country. 331 right now. The average for a uh, regular gallon of unleaded gasoline. So something to keep in mind if you are headed out. All right, Mark and Max. Thank you, RJ. Top story this morning, San Antonio's first ever gun buyback event ended hours early because it ran out of gift cards. Councilman John Courage says more than 900 weapons were traded in yesterday afternoon over at the Dome. That's 300 more than the original goal. They ran out of $175,000 worth of HEB gift cards. Gun owners got one for each firearm. Courage says this event has something he has wanted for years. There's too much gun violence in our city, and some of that gun violence takes place in people's homes. As people lined up outside the Alamo Dome, they passed by shirts with the names of the more than 2,700 victims of gun violence here in Bear County. This morning, tributes are pouring in from Washington and around the country for former First Lady Rosalind Carter. So as she died over the weekend at her home in Plains, Georgia, she was 96 years old. Here's ABC's Liz Landers with a look at her life and legacy. A life of service and faith, former First Lady Rosalind Carter was a mother of four, a mental health advocate, and a champion of her husband, the 39th President Jimmy Carter. President Joe Biden remembering the family. You know, they're really an incredible family because they brought so much grace to the office. Look what kind of post-president he was. He did the same thing for people after he was president. And First Lady Jill Biden highlighting Rosalind Carter's issue advocacy. She was well known for her efforts on mental health and caregiving and women's rights. So I hope that uh, during the holidays, uh, you'll consider saying you include the Carter family in your prayers. 
Born in Plains, Georgia, like her husband, Rosalind married a young Naval Academy graduate, Jimmy Carter, when she was just 18 years old. After moving for her husband's naval career and running the family's peanut business, Rosalind helped her husband's political career go from Georgia... My name is Jimmy Carter and I'm running for president. To the 1976 presidential trail and then the White House. So help me God. She entered the White House at the height of the women's movement, the first time a first lady maintained an office in the East Wing with formal staff. As she would write in her memoir, quote, I was more political partner than a political wife. Her husband calling her, quote, an almost equal extension of myself. Mental health and uh, the problems of the elderly. Um, those are the two things that I've been interested in for a long time. After her husband's presidency, Rosalind received a Presidential Medal of Freedom and devoted herself to Habitat for Humanity. The Carter Center announced that the former First Lady will lie in repose at the Carter Presidential Library in Atlanta next Monday. She will be buried in Plains, Georgia next Wednesday. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. This week, expect to be the busiest in the travel category it has been in many years. According to AAA, just over 55 million people will be hitting the roads for this Thanksgiving holiday. Most people will be driving to their destination, but keep this in mind if you're also heading to the airport. Flying is that bigger jump that we've seen from 2022. Our forecast is projecting a 6% increase in air travel for Thanksgiving. The FAA predicts Wednesday of this week will be the busiest day for travel with close to 50,000 flights. AAA says the best times to travel are Wednesday morning and Sunday morning as early as possible. All right, and if you still need to fill up this morning, here's a look at the current gas prices for regular unleaded gas. National average, $3.30. Texas average, $2.79. And here in San Antonio, look at that, $2.74. I think Spurs lost both their games this weekend, didn't they, Max? Yeah, I was going to, RJ just left the room, but I was going to give a shout out to RJ because he is such a faithful fan. He goes to the games. He yeah. not only went to the game on Saturday, but then worked early Sunday morning. Wow. Sat through the game, and uh, you know what? He, he's kind of the insider. We, ex we do expect more from our Spurs. Next up for our team, back-to-back -back home games against the LA Clippers. First is tonight, tip off set for 7 o'clock, then coming up again on Wednesday night. And a familiar foe, Kawhi Leonard. That's right. Time now, 537, 67 degrees. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 67 degrees. Whew. What is Thanksgiving week gonna look like? How about those travel plans? Mike and RJ are in the house. We're gonna check in with them in just a few moments. Just about 5.41, now to consumer news and Wall Street heading into Thanksgiving week on a bit of an upswing. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P all closed slightly higher Friday. The S&P now near its highest level in three months. Oil prices, however, are on a downswing amid slipping demand. And the whirlwind weekend around the AI giant behind ChatGPT spinning into this week. Remember, on Friday, OpenAI board ousted the CEO and founder, Sam Altman. Now, there were talks about possibly bringing him back, but as of 3 a.m. this morning, he is now headed to Microsoft, which had invested about $10 billion into OpenAI. He is going to be the head of Microsoft's well, AI research. He was a free agent after all at this point. <sighs> it has been, okay. Tracking that has been so fun because yeah. they tried to oust them. Mm -hmm. There was the board decision. People started leaving, and it was funny. I saw a great tweet that was like, be the boss that if you get fired, people come with you. That's right. Absolutely. Now he's at Microsoft. So feather in their cap. 541, 67 degrees. All right. Speaking of technology, Elon Musk under fire after the break. Why he is now threatening a massive lawsuit. 545, Elon Musk fighting back today as more advertisers flee his social media platform over concerns about anti-Semitism. ABC is Alano Moyes tracking the latest this morning. Elon Musk is threatening what he describes as a thermonuclear lawsuit as the list of companies suspending ads on his social media platform X grows longer. So this is a kind of 
disaster for, for Elon. Apple, IBM, Lionsgate, Paramount, and ABC parent company Disney have pulled their ads from X, formerly Twitter. The departures started Thursday when Musk agreed with a post echoing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that falsely claims Jews are organizing immigrants to replace the white race. A lot of these brands took a look at this tweet and saw it as a step too far. That same day, the advocacy group Media Matters reported that X places ads for major brands next to pro-Nazi content. Musk then writing, the split second court opens on Monday. X will be filing a thermonuclear lawsuit against Media Matters and all those who colluded in this fraudulent attack on our company. And I think the most important thing is that in his response, in that legal threat, he actually confirmed that our reporting was was accurate. I mean, he said that everything in our report Report actually, as we said, it existed, did actually exist on the platform. X says it does not intentionally place brands next to such content and says the Media Matters report completely misrepresented the real user experience to undermine freedom of speech and mislead advertisers. Restrictions have been loosened on X since Musk bought the platform last year and formerly banned accounts have been reinstated. That's basically our core argument, is that the platform is so saturated with extremism, with white genocide, with anti-Semitism, with racism, with conspiracy theories, things that otherwise should be managed. Musk on Friday posted, anyone advocating the genocide of any group will be suspended from this platform. When an X user asked why the platform is being targeted by advertisers despite recent controversies involving other platforms, including TikTok, Musk responded, great question. Apple was reportedly on track to spend $180 million on X in one year. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, check this out. The San Antonio biker community and Horizons and more. They teamed up for a big turkey giveaway. This is awesome. So here's a look at how things went yesterday. This is over near Loop 410 near Parambital. It was a drive through event. People were able to pull up and grab a turkey. I know there's families out there that's struggling, uh, and then uh, turkey, uh, turkeys are getting expensive now. So, hey, if we can help by simply supplying the main dish for these holiday season, absolutely, that's what we do. Turkeys are getting expensive. It seems like everything's getting expensive. So this was the second year for the event. As you can see, a lot of people showed up and got their turkeys. Have you guys started planning for Thanksgiving? Yeah, the turkey, uh, it's just a breast, comes out of the uh, freezer today. Or nice. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How about you? We're going to my girlfriend's parents. There you go. We, we don't even. You're well taken care of. Exactly. 548, let's check on traffic right now. Not everybody's off this week. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think there's some schools that are still in for at least a day or two. Yeah, yeah. And starting to see things pick up a little bit uh, out in the roads. And speaking of the drive through right now might be a good time to go maybe get some coffee if you're headed out right now on your Monday morning commute. We do have a stalled vehicle being reported here on the southbound lanes of 37 at Loop 410 on our southeast side. You can see that that it's uh, not causing any major delays. Haven't seen any sort of tech stop activity uh, in this area or any sort of hazard lights, but traffic you can see is still getting along there pretty smooth. And uh, you see now our maps have picked this up there. So again, the southeast side, uh, 37 southbound there at 410. We have now cleared out our previous stalled vehicle there that was on the westbound lanes of 410 at uh, Old Pearsall Road. So for the most part, traffic looking pretty good right now. I'll take this to the uh, rotating camera, see if we get another couple of other looks at the city. Love that shot right there. Really, really good stuff there. It looks like the Tower of the Americas is uh, a little bit covered by fog now. Uh, I-10 at Provent, traffic moving along pretty smooth there. And 35 South, the upper levels there at Main, traffic moving pretty good. You know, talk about uh, turkey prices. Mm -hmm. So I went shopping yesterday and I was like, ah, you know, do I want a 10 pound turkey? And I was looking at the price of it. And then I, 13 pound, I looked at it and I was like, why is that one cheaper? Same brand, everything. The 10 pounder was more expensive per mm. pound than the 13 pound was. Okay, so you want 13 pound? I want, the, yeah, so I got more leftovers in the For us. Yeah. Just think about us. Right. We're gonna be. I'm gonna be here Friday with you. That's right. You are, yeah. aren't you? Okay. And I know you're a, a chef, so I'll, I'll bring you. My wife actually likes to do all the, uh, okay. you know, the cooking on Thanksgiving, right. so I'll bring you some uh, some out. creaming casserole. So okay. there you go. Take it. All right. Speaking of which, the baking has begun for Thanksgiving. Peach bread. That sounds really Ooh, that good. That sounds really good. Yeah. Spread a little cream cheese on that. Bonnie Lee, if you need our address, please let us know. <laughs> Even though you're in Houston, Houston. Yeah. that's okay. Bonnie Lee, if you need our address, please <laughs> let us know. Indeed. All right. So speaking of Thanksgiving, 
So there is the small chance for a couple of showers, but I want to show you the two different long range computer models I'm looking at and we've been looking at all along. This one in particular obviously has a lot of clouds hanging around here, but it keeps a lot of the precipitation well out there to the east of us through the evening hours. Then we start to clear out just a little bit. Here's a different computer model. This one now granted broad brush, so not everywhere, but this one puts the rain in here on Thursday, just a few little light sprinkles and then clears us on out by later on in the day. So that's the uh, why it's not set in stone yet as far as what's going to be happening on Thursday. I'm kind of leaning toward the a couple of sprinkles side, sort of splitting the difference in between the two of them. Speaking of a couple of sprinkles, we've had a few some mist out there at the airport. You can see 410 over there by the airport. Little bit of a sheen on the highway. Two miles visibility officially is being reported all that that picture right there, which that camera's right by the airport wasn't too bad, but there are hints of fog all around the area. It's gotten thicker going out 10 in toward Bernie and then Eagle Pass, just a half mile visibility right now. So just once again, it's a little bit of fog everywhere. Take it easy. Temperatures stay steady all morning long and then by uh, late morning noon is when the front moves on through here. The wind's going to shift around to the northwest. It's going to be breezy today. We are going to be clearing on out and temperatures though will spike up to 80. Then they'll be dropping down as the uh, cooler air starts to work its way on in here. And like I said about winds, this is going to be the really big story for tomorrow. Today we've got those wind gusts about uh, 20 25 miles per hour but then tonight is when the winds pick up and early tomorrow morning we're going to be seeing those wind gusts 30 35 miles per hour maybe even stronger than that so that's something we're going to have to definitely keep in mind if you have those inflatable uh, decorations out in your yard make sure they are not inflated overnight tonight and tomorrow because they may end up in your neighbor's yard or somewhere down the street so temperatures are going to be perfect fall weather 40s, 60s for the lows and the highs, respectively. Keep watch on Thursday if we get a couple of sprinkles around here. And then Friday looks good. Shopping, the parade, the tree lighting, and maybe a sprinkle or two over the weekend. I think another front moves through here on Sunday. So, let's, so, so tree chair inflatable is like a stray dog. Go ahead and tag it somehow or microchip it so when it <laughs> flies down the street in another neighborhood or something. Deflate it, kind of, you know, put a weight on top oh, of it. Oh, you could do so, that too. Yeah. I like the microchip idea. Thanks, Max. Yeah. 553, 67 <laughs> degrees. All right. Busy weekend at the movies just ahead. We're going to show you what came out on top and what fell short. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on a story that we've all been following, the war between Israel and Hamas. And the new video that Israeli forces claim shows Hamas used a hospital complex for its operations. Also, where OpenAI's leadership stands after ousting CEO Sam Altman. Now Microsoft has picked him up. We're going to tell you what it all means for the future and safety of artificial intelligence. You'll see those stories and so much more on GMA. What are the Hunger Games for? Landing on top of the North American movie box office in its first weekend in theaters, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, with $44 million in ticket sales, say studio estimates. That's a low for the franchise, but with $54 million from dozens of international markets. The film has already earned over $98 million. A brother is a friend who can never leave you. It's the strongest bond in the world. Trolls Band Together, the third in the animated series, debuted second with an estimated $30.6 million. The jukebox musical brings back Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake in main voice roles. It's expected to total $100 million globally for the weekend. The Marvels in third was nearly bested by an R-rated Eli Roth horror, Thanksgiving, both making about $10 million. The latter stars Patrick Dempsey and Addison Rae. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour resumes Sunday night in Rio de Janeiro after Saturday's concert was postponed amid a deadly heat wave. On Friday, a fan died before the show started. There was controversy about stadium policy barring water from being brought inside. Sunday, firefighters sprayed the crowd with water outside the stadium and free water, cups and handheld fans were provided. Sold. Kurt Cobain's Sky Stang One guitar has sold for over one and a half million dollars at an auction in Nashville. Among other belongings of the late Nirvana lead singer, a pair of Levi's jeans sold for over 400,000 bucks. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News.
Weather and traffic coming up at first. The partying is over and the problems have begun outside a local bar. San Antonio police say someone fired toward a crowd wounding a woman. Katrina Weber live on Blanco Road near General Kruger. Now we understand Katrina that this happened during an argument or a fight. Well, that's right. Police tell us there were two groups of women involved in that fight. Women who had just come out of this bar, which apparently is after hours. Uh, they got into a fight, but they say the shooter was someone in a truck. But look at what's going on behind me. A pretty wide crime scene that police have roped off in this parking lot. The bar is actually back in the corner. According to Google Maps, it looks like the name of it is Mi Amores Nightclub. And again, police tell us this is an after hours club. People were leaving as it was actually closed this morning right around five o'clock and that is when the two groups of women got involved in some sort of a dispute a fight uh, right outside the bar police say someone in a truck did fire toward that crowd and hit the woman in her leg taken to a hospital and police say her wound was not life-threatening in fact they think it may have been a bullet that ricocheted off the ground and then hit her in the leg but they do have a pretty wide crime scene uh, again as I mentioned and now uh, they are searching it very thoroughly for any evidence connected to the shooting the person who did the shooting took off and police were still trying to track him or her down at this point reporting live on the north side Katrina Weber KSAT 12 news Katrina, thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. 6 a.m. on your Monday, November 20th. All right, thank you so much for starting your morning with us, starting your week with us. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm filling in for Stephanie today. Like we've been saying, it is vacation week for so many. It's an honor to get called up to the big leagues with you guys. <laughs> Glad you are here, Max Massey. Things are getting a little hairy around here. They've been well, like that for the last hour. We'll talk to RJ in a moment. Good morning. Talking about uh, No Shave November, of course. One thing, uh, it's not too hairy on the roads, though, but there is some fog. Mm. And especially if you're heading out toward the hill country this yeah. morning. So that has uh, definitely thickened up. And we've got a lot of mist out there as well. And I've been pointing out all morning long how, well, I know this is a little out of focus, but there's a kind of a sheen on the road. And visibility, at least in this camera, this is looking over toward the airport isn't bad, but officially it's reporting two miles visibility. However, burning has now dropped down to just three quarters of a mile. So again, you're heading out to the northwest to the west. You're going to run into some thick fog as well as going down 37 in toward Pleasanton. A lot of it over there along the Rio Grande quarter mile visibility over at Eagle Pass as of right now. So again, this is going to be sticking around through a good chunk of the morning commute and even through mid morning. Then we've got some big changes coming about late morning right around noon temperatures were almost 20 degrees above normal right now it is definitely humid out there take a look at these numbers though because these are actually going to be higher than what our high temperatures will be the next few days after this front moves through later on this morning so we've got Temperatures not moving at all. Cloudy skies, a little bit of fog, a little bit of mist around here. Then by late morning noon is when that front moves on through here. Now we are still going to be warming up in behind it until the warm air or excuse me, until the cool air pushes the warm air out of the way and it's going to get pushed out with some pretty gusty winds as well. Blustery today and then really, really windy overnight tonight and tomorrow. We're going to see wind gusts 30, 35, close to 40 miles per hour and that's going to be the case tomorrow. Great weather in store. What about Thanksgiving? What about the long weekend? Those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, RJ? Anything big? No, Mike, uh, nothing too big, but you did mention that fog, the kind of that hazy and that sheen on the roads right now. I was looking at this camera, and you could tell that you we are, have, do have a little bit of mistiness out there. We do have this stalled vehicle there, southbound 37 at Loop 410, not causing any major delays at the moment. That's what, exactly what our maps are indicating. Right now, the rest of the city, things looking pretty good out there. We had another stalled vehicle in the southwest west side that is cleared out a little bit of a delay there on the east side there off of a 410 near china grove but uh no tr no accident or anything of that note to being indicated right now by text dot so again wanted to show you this shot and show you one other shot here show you kind of what mike is uh, talking about here that's the tower of the americas can't see it right now the top of it so we definitely have a little bit of fog in the area so something to keep in mind if you are headed out right now but otherwise things looking pretty good out there mark and max back to you guys rj thank you happening today a woman found guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. We'll find out her sentence. Amanda Montoya was previously charged with the murder of her boyfriend, Cesar Gallegos, back in 2016. In this retrial, it was after Montoya's case ended in a mistrial because the jury couldn't decide on a verdict. On Friday, a Bear County jury spent about 11 hours deliberating and came back with a not guilty of murder verdict, but guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 
that is still a first degree felony. So the punishment range is five to 99 years or in prison. The punishment phase will begin this morning in district court here in San Antonio. Also today, a suspected serial killer making his first appearance in court. This one, Travis County. Raul Meza, he was arrested back in May for allegedly killing his roommate, Jesse Fraga. Before being arrested, though, Meza called police implicated himself not only in his roommate's death, but also the murder of a 65-year-old Austin woman named Gloria Lofton that happened back in 2019. Uh, Austin police say they're now looking into eight to possibly ten different cold cases that Meza could be connected to, including a possible case here in San Antonio. Ameza had been in jail previously for murder. Back in 1982, he was given a plea deal for the murder of an eight-year-old, Kendra Page. He only served 11 months of that, 11 years of that sentence. Meza currently charged with capital murder. No yet word yet if the death penalty could be applied to his case. In your morning headlines, a deal to free more hostages held by Hamas appears to be closer to happening. Negotiators say they're closer to an agreement with Hamas to release 50 hostages in exchange for Israel allowing more aid into Gaza. The number of hostages to be released and the length of the ceasefire that would be imposed are still being negotiated. Meanwhile, tributes pouring in from Washington and really around the world for the former, former First Lady Rosalind Carter. She died this weekend at the age of 96 years old. Carter, the mother of four, entered the White House at the height of the women's movement. She maintained an office in the East Wing with formal staff. After her husband's legacy and presidency, Rosalind received a Presidential Medal of Freedom, devoted herself to Habitat for Humanity. Colombian singer Shakira has reached a deal to avoid a tax fraud trial in Spain. That trial was set to begin today. The Colombian-born Grammy-winning singer was accused of not paying more than $15 million in Spanish income taxes between 2012 and 2014. Shakira has repeatedly denied the allegations, insisting she didn't live in Spain during that time. Well, whether it's for a small intimate gathering or a big family reunion, millions of Americans will be on the move this Thanksgiving week. And if you plan to hit the roads or take to the skies this week, there are important things you have to keep in mind. Here's ABC's Justin Finch with your travel forecast for the holiday. Turkey Day is almost upon us, and AAA is expecting this to be the third busiest Thanksgiving for holiday travel since 2000. 55.4 million Americans are projected to travel domestically over the Wednesday through Sunday holiday period. 49 million are going to drive, while 4.7 million will fly to their destinations. 4.7 million is a big number, and it's a 6% jump compared to 2022. The TSA says they are ready for the uptick, and to avoid delays, they want you to pack any Thanksgiving dinner items properly. If you can spill it, spray it, spread it, pump it, or pour it, it's a liquid or it's an aerosol and it should go in your check baggage. Cranberry sauce, even in a jelly-like consistency, cannot be taken in your carry-on luggage. For those 49 million hitting the road, a major reason for delays will be, well, there are 49 million other people out there with you. Wednesday has notoriously been the worst day to be on the roads before Thanksgiving, and that time frame between 2 and 6 p.m. is the worst time to be on the road because at that point you're mixing holiday travelers on the roads with commuters, people who have to work on Wednesday. Try to be on the road by 10 a.m. Wednesday morning or wait until Wednesday night. You can also consider leaving early on Thanksgiving morning. The roads are much more empty on Thursday morning than they are compared to Wednesday. The good news for drivers, gas prices are much cheaper this Thanksgiving compared to last year. They've been steadily coming down since mid-August, and we expect that trend to continue for the next couple of weeks. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Switching now to sports news, the Spurs have been having a rough couple of games. That's a bit of an understatement, Max. So much optimism mm -hmm. going forward. Some people... Taking to social media saying, what happened to our 42-win team? I know. But just when you think you have a comfortable lead, well, they let it slip away. And it happened a couple times in the last few games. Saturday night, a perfect example of that. Victor Wembeyama, another great game, especially on the defensive end. A career-high eight blocks, becoming just the third teenager in NBA history with eight blocks in a game. But after the Spurs led most of the game, and at one point led by as many as 19 points, well, the Memphis Grizzlies, they woke up 
and they had a comeback. They ended up winning at 120 to 108, heading the Spurs their eighth straight loss. At one point, we got to react, and uh, you know, uh, there's some good points, but there's some also like you know bad bad stuff too. So um, we're gonna have to figure it out. We have a very healthy locker room, you know, uh, healthy relations between each other. We're losing, we're losing together. We often give up leads in the in the second half, and we need to be better at that ASAP. Here's the week ahead for our Spurs back-to-back -back games against the L.A. Clippers at Frostbank Center here in San Antonio. Tonight and Wednesday, both 7 o'clock tips. Then San Antonio hits the road at the Warriors, then defending champion Denver Nuggets. Some real true tests coming up for our squad here in the next week or so. After eight straight losses, that is not the schedule <laughs> we'll be staring at. Agreed, Max. 6'10 right now, 67 degrees. All right, one of the best Christmas light displays in all of San Antonio is back and brighter than ever. After the break, we're talking about the light, the way display at UIW. Outside with live cam, a little bit of fog, kind of humid, dreary out there, 67 degrees. Big cold front on the way. And if you have family coming to town for Thanksgiving this week, we'll look ahead all the way through Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and beyond.